G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Monday here in Australia, but obviously Sunday over in the States, and yep, we got it pretty much as I suspected. Sunday we got the retracement. Bitcoin got up to near sort of 60,000 and retraced back down to 57,000. So still stuck in that kind of range at the moment, but this is getting interesting. So while Bitcoin's not doing a whole lot, its dominance continues to drop and it's getting so close to going below 50%. And so really, once it goes below 50%, particularly if it stays there, if it just dips down for a minute and jumps back up, then this isn't in play. But if it does dip down below 50% and we see it continue to drop, we're going into you know the legit alt season where things are just going to absolutely explode. People are going to take their Bitcoin profits and just pile them into altcoins, and you're going to see altcoins, you know, do crazy kind of things. Now, again, never financial advice, but some altcoins will literally 10, 20, 30 x in a matter of you know weeks to months. They really will just go crazy. But what we need to remember is. That's usually kind of the end for the cycle there. So if we do go into this cycle, and now Bitcoin can still continue to go up along with them, it just generally won't go as much. But generally when that happens, that's the end of the cycle. That's when things are just going sort of silly. It's not to say we can't have a mini alt season again. So again, Bitcoin can still go up slowly. But if you know we really see BTC dominance get down to you know 30%, for me, I would be thinking that is the end of the run. It's time to, you know, cash out whatever you're willing to sort of cash out and then wait for the next bear market. But look, maybe things are different. They have been a little bit different so far already. And they are different slightly from every last cycle, but they're, you know, fairly similar as well. So that's really what I'm waiting for at the moment is I'm just waiting to see, are we going to go into that Again, where Bitcoin dominance drops down to, you know, 35%, 45%, something like that. If that's the case, I think we've hit sort of the cycle, the peak cycle. So for me, I'll be starting to cash out. Now, I won't really be selling any Bitcoin at 60,000. I already sold some when it was down around 47,000. So I'll just be holding on to whatever Bitcoin I have left. But the altcoins, I will absolutely be selling, you know, some of them. I won't exit out too fast just in case my theory is wrong and it all continues to go up. But I definitely will be taking some profits along the way. You know, it's no one truly knows what's going to happen in this market. That's a fact. Anyone who's telling you they do is just full of it. It's just their opinion and what they think is going to happen. And they could be 100 percent correct. They, they legitimately could be. But they're probably just guessing. That's all it is. So we just need to keep that in mind. You know, don't take what I say as gospel. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. And, you know, I don't know anyone on YouTube that is a legit financial advisor. But that's not to say there's none out there. I just don't know of any. So, you know, take everything with a slight grain of salt. You know, if they're talking to you about a coin, it's possibly something they're involved in. And that's all right. You know, everyone's got their own biases. And, you know, you know, they're making money the entire time, whether the market's going up or down, if they're a big YouTuber, and I'm not trying to knock them, I'd love to be a big YouTuber myself, but they're making revenue all the time. So for them, you know, they've always got like a backup plan for the rest of us. And I'm not a big YouTuber at the moment, so I don't have a backup plan. I've got to make sure I'm smart with my money. And I'm reading the market fairly well as best I can read it anyway. All right, moving on. So 1.94 trillion dollars so we're under the 1.95 that we're at btc dominance is dropping so under 55 percent eth dominance dropped a little bit it was 12.4 but now back to 12 percent and gas prices that's the lowest i've sort of seen them for a while we've been up around the 100 and even the 200 mark so interesting now look it looks like a bit of a mixed bag here there's red and green in there let's have a look what's done really well in the last 24 hours has anything really pumped Holy moly, and I've got a story about this coming up. Wazir X, there we go, pumped 225% in 24 hours and 1,000% in the last seven days. Look, if anyone is in Wazir X right now, this is just my personal opinion, not financial advice. Take profits, god damn, especially in the last 24 hours. If you've been in it for over a week, Take the 223% profit. Just, you know, at least get your initial investment back 100% because coins, you know, it'll have a retracement. I can 100% guarantee you it will. 
And look, is there a chance this goes up by another 100, 200%? Of course there's that chance. But geez, if it doesn't and all of a sudden loses 500% of that 1,000% that it's put in, then you're going to be really kicking yourself. You know, I'd rather have taken some profit and lost some unrealized gains than not have taken some profits and be losing money. That's you know my personal opinion. All right, BitTorrent still doing well. That's uh, doing quite well. I I got my free BitTorrent and I cashed it in straight away for I think I may have doubled my money, something like that. Now I'm kicking myself and wishing I had have held on. But what do you do? Stacks, something I wanted to get back into. I think I sold all of it too early. But have a look at that straight up. Something's going on there. I'd be ready for that to come back down fairly fast. We can see a lot of these are just kind of going vertical and there's some parabolic sort of stuff going on there. So we just got to be careful. There might be some market manipulation. And look, it's a possibility that maybe we already are at the end of this cycle and that's why the altcoins are going crazy and we've only got a few weeks left before this is all over. Now that would really go against history and the way it's played out before. But it is just something we need to keep in mind. So if you haven't taken at least some profits and you're in profit already, just consider it. I'm not saying you should. You've got to make up your own mind, do what's right by you. But, you know, I would consider taking some profits. I already have. Again, I cashed out 10% uh, back when Bitcoin was at sort of 47, 48,000. So I'm pretty happy with that. And if the market kind of dumps, then I haven't lost all my money. I've at least got some of my money back. But I'm hoping that there's more to go and I'll be able to get at least what I put back in, back and some profits uh, and hopefully some good profits. But anyway, look at that. 223, 65, 54, 25, 21, 19, 16, 16, 15, basically 19. Now this is what happens, well, I mean, they go hand in hand. This is happening because Bitcoin dominance is dropping and Bitcoin's dominance is dropping because this is happening. People are just having a look and speculating and going, rightio, we might be at the end of, you know, uh, the Bitcoin peak for now, I'm not saying for the rest of this cycle. And so they're going, right, it's time to get into altcoins and make some really good money. And then they'll take those profits out of the altcoins, put them back into Bitcoin and keep flip-flopping between the two until they think we're at the peak, whenever that may be. All right, that's some pretty good losses there, some really good ones. I mean, seven days, 100%, 30%, 40%. 235%, 1,079%, that is amazing. 167% for Holo down there, so some great moves. All right, what about losses though? Has anything not done so well? Pretty much no, <laughs> that's the answer. Filecoin down 6.5%, it's still up, you know, 41% for the week. It's uh, still down from uh, its peak there, but look, that's all right. Uh, yeah, these losses, they're really all around 5% or less, and that's pretty much nothing in the crypto world. Now, 9.4% 9 9 is a reasonable loss, but if you're still up 70% over the last seven days, then I'm not too worried about that. And again, it, it's Sunday. It's the traditional you know, Sunday sell-off that we've been having for quite some time. It was coming earlier. It was coming sort of Thursday night, Friday morning for a while there. Uh, and now it's basically moved to Sundays. And look, now that it's become a pattern, everyone's going to try and you know uh, make profits off that, and it'll change. That's the way uh, things generally work. All right, so gains pretty good, losses very very minimal. But look, we did have some losses, and again, Sunday. That's generally what happens. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin price. So here we go. We can see it broke out of this wedge, but. Look, it is playing out a little bit, like I said. It does look like it's going to come back and possibly test this line. So this is the wedge that it was in. And it's a very minor wedge, more a channel, but it has sort of rolled over. Now, not come back and quite tested the 56,000 that I was talking about, but geez, it's, it's not far off. And look, it really has kind of wicked down to about there so i did get down to 56,000 you know 344 so i uh, did uh, do what i expected but hasn't quite come down to test here but look if the bitcoin dominance does drop i think you can see bitcoin starting to come back down and maybe test fifty thousand dollars because it seems like a lot of people are just pouring into the alts at the moment 
All right, moving on to the stories. Wazir X, we just talked about it. Soars 250% to all-time high so, uh, following NFT platform launch. And now look, this is the uh, exchange from India where they're talking about banning crypto and all the rest of it. And then the next day it's no law. We're not banning it. We're just regulating. And then the day after that, no, it looks like they're going to ban it. Who knows what's going on over in India? But obviously, people are still keen on crypto over in there because it's uh, India's uh, exchange, you know, their biggest one, I think, that they have over there. And the talk of NFTs. But look, we, we got a story about NFTs that's uh, slightly worrying and also why I personally didn't buy any NFTs. I do think they're going to be big in the future. You know, the good ones will always be worth money. But a lot of the NFTs that came out, they're just kind of junk NFTs that... You know, they're like trading cards a little bit. The odd one or two here and there might be worth a lot of money, but really most of them will basically go to zero. So well done to Wizier X. And again, 250%, it went over 1,000% in seven days. But this is what I was talking about with NFTs. So the average NFT price has declined 70% since last month. 70%, that's almost 100%. You're not far off. You bought it for $100, it's worth about $30 now. So according to nonfungible.com, the NFT market could be on the verge of a silent crash. Now, don't get me wrong, it'll come back again. It'll be like everything, but that's the good NFTs will come back. The crap ones are just simply going to be crap. And a lot of the NFTs that I saw out there, you know, other than kind of sentimental value, you know, you saw some... Uh, street fighter cards and all the rest of it you know or card type things a digital card that's just you know if you're a what you call it a street fighter fan i don't think those cards are oil they're not even cards nfts will ever really be worth any money plain and simple but you know there were people paying a hundred dollars four hundred dollars and some people might have been lucky to flip them for even more money but i'd say most of those have gone down and i'm a street fighter fan so please don't think that i'm hating on street fighter i love the game i still play it to this day on occasions but i just looked at the prices for those and i was like ah uh, they're just a novelty thing they're not really you know the kind of nfts that are going to hold their value and there was tons of those nfts out there i'd rather invest in the platforms that they're hosted on i.e as i've said before many a time now uh engine which is on ethereum and you know wax and things like that that's what i would invest in those not the nfts themselves i just don't know enough about them and i did suspect something like this was going to happen all right ron paul so he warns that the government could crack down on bitcoin and the threat is real yeah, they could, but, you know, why would they? What have they got to gain by doing that now? They're just going to stifle something that is going to bring them a ton of tax. They're still going to collect all the taxes on it, so over-regulating it at the moment would just be counterproductive, particularly when, you know, we've got so much stuff going on with the pandemic. It seems like it's getting worse in places. They're getting wave four, you know, wave one was bad and then wave two was bad and three was bad and now they're on to wave four and you know new mutant strains and think things like that coming so i just i can't see why they would crack down on crypto when they need the money they need to be bringing in the revenue yeah i just don't see it happening but look maybe they would and what he said the government is the threat he said nothing that they will are uh, noting sorry that they will crack down because they have the ability to do it yeah i, I, I don't agree with that and look you know, I'm really going to be concerned if I'm wrong, but I just can't see why they would do it and take away that revenue. They want the revenue at the moment. You know, there's, you know, some places are still on lockdown and all the rest of it. People can buy and trade crypto from home. They don't need exchanges, you know, to be open like the stock exchange and things like that. So I just can't see that happening. Uh, you know, maybe once the pandemic and everything is completely over and we're on top of it, yeah, maybe then they might. But even then, I think they'll have made so much money from it. And there's so much things happening, you know. Again, there's regulation happening, just not over-regulation. I think that's what he might mean by cracking down on it. And that is a concern. We don't want them to over-regulate it. We don't want it to become the same as the markets that we currently have that don't work and have all these issues. We want to, you know, we want the new thing to come that is obviously, you know, going to take us forward, uh, you know, into the future of how finances and things like that work not we don't want to repeat of the past we know that system's broken and doesn't work 
Right, moving on, and you know, be careful, ladies and gentlemen. So, DeFi aggregator raided by five hackers on the day it launched. So, uh, again, be careful with all this new DeFi stuff. There's so many rug pulls and scams and you know, bugs in the system and all the rest of it, and just hacks. So, four malicious hackers and one white hat have gone to town on forced DAO during its launch day. So the Ethereum-based yield aggregator had only just launched its airdrop campaign on the 3rd of April when four malicious black hat hackers managed to drain a total of 183 ETH, worth, appro worth approximately 367,000 at the time. Now there was one friendly white hat, white hat hacker who assisted the team by alerting them uh, to prevent, fur uh, prevent further losses. So yeah, be careful. Uh, you know, for me, I don't get into too much stuff that's really, really new because you know there's so many issues with it. I like to just invest in things that have got some history and have been around. Yes, the the gains are bigger in the new Fandangle thing, but you know the chances of it not working out are also a lot higher. So that's why I stay away from uh, ICOs and things like that. It, it's not that I'm completely against them but you know back in 2017 I got into a few and they just basically did nothing and others ran off with my money so yeah I'd rather invest in you know things that have been around for a while and at least have some kind of track record and particularly ones where you know exactly who uh, is working on the projects and that nothing where you know everything's anonymous we've you know we've learned from that bit connect and you know things like that all right Seems like uh, Thailand, the people from uh, Thailand are getting right into cryptocurrency. So it's booming. It's up 588% since November. So crypto adoption appears to be booming in Thailand with the Local Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC estimating domestic crypto volumes have increased by nearly 600% since November. And this was compiled by the SEC saying it is increased from 574.5 million in November to 3.96 billion in November. So yeah, the Thai the people getting right behind crypto and piling in, so good on them. Compound, we're just talking about this the other day. Someone put, I think it was 629,000 Ethereum, so not dollars worth of Ethereum, 629,000 Ethereum into Compound. So Compound Decentralized Lending Protocol has reached new heights with over $15 billion worth of cryptocurrency available for borrowing. So again, DeFi, I think, is where it's at. If you're not uh, into DeFi, I, I'm not sure you know why you haven't been. I'm not saying the prices uh, can't go lower, but I think long-term, the good projects, they've just got the future written all over them. You know, decentralized... You know, they're not charging you a fortune to be on there, although the gas fees, I mean, that's that's a killer. But once they're sorted, yeah, I really do think DeFi is going to be a behemoth space. And, you know, the comp token has generally done pretty well as well. So, yeah. All right, last but not least. So Binance Crypto Derivatives Platform sees record open interest of $10 billion. So uh, the Binance Futures continues to soar in popular popularity as more and more retail customers add fuel to the bull run. So they're, they're still coming. We haven't seen, you know, the massive interest that we do. That We haven't hit that kind of peak yet. But, I mean, you know, we'll, it doesn't appear on the charts that way. Although some of those altcoins that we were looking at at the moment, that looks like a whole lot of you know, parabolic kind of stuff going on. So maybe we'll wait and see. Now, open interest on derivatives platform hit a record high of over 10 billion on Saturday, amounting to a year on year growth of nearly 3,900%, according to data source CoinGecko. So again, this market, it's still growing. Just because things are kind of leveled out and we're having a bit of a lull and not so much in. Well, some altcoins have. I mean, I've got a number of my altcoins. They already pumped. And so they've just really slowed down and retraced. But now we're waiting to see, you know, whether they're going to fire back up again or will Bitcoin actually get on a run? So maybe Bitcoin dominance gets down gets down to almost sort of 50%. I think there's a bit of a line there around 52%. And then nah, Bitcoin gets on a run and goes even higher. Or, you know, it was 60,000 the peak. And now we're in that final power of you know, parabolic move of the altcoins. You know, based on charts and previous history, it wouldn't appear that it's that way. 
but look, it could be, and that's what we need to keep in mind. So as I said earlier, if you're well in profit and you haven't taken any profits yet, at least consider it just in case you're wrong and you're not basically, you know, you haven't basically lost not that you'd lose all your money in crypto uh, if you're in good projects you might just have to wait four years before you can kind of make that money back so yeah for me just beware be careful maybe this is you know a moment and maybe look it's not we just continue to go so much higher no one knows and be careful of anyone that tells you they do know all right well that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that game train some of those old coins are looking pretty good And I'll see you next time.